Good morning, very warm welcome to Jnana Varsani, FDBPA's weekly knowledge session. We are meeting after a break of uh, nearly a month uh, due to festivals and uh, our own annual event IDPS. Happy to share that IDPS generated a tremendous response from the industry. Thank you everyone uh, for uh, your support. Uh, today we have an interesting and current topic, deep fake, which has taken the world by storm. Uh, an incredible technology with horrifying consequences. Let me introduce our speaker, Mr. Vasan Garimala, who will be talking about deep fake and uh, dark web today. Uh, Mr. Vasan has a BTEC in computer science engineering and uh, 13 plus years of experience in information security, cloud security, data privacy, risk management, business continuity, and disaster recovery. He holds uh, prestigious industry certificate and is recognized for his expertise in compliance, risk assessment, and uh, developing security solutions. He has articles and publications to his credit and speaks regularly on uh, cybersecurity-related topics. He's currently with Cloud4C Services Private Limited uh, as uh, AVP of uh, Security Compliance. He's also serving as the Secretary of Isaka Hyderabad Chapter currently. Uh, welcome, Mr. Vasant. Over to you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Valju. Uh, very good evening to one and all. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank FDI for uh, you know uh, inviting me, inviting me for this uh, uh, to give a seminar on deep fakes and dark web, which is uh, you know it, it is a thing that is running on. Uh, you know we are keep on hearing for the past few weeks from film actors and uh, you know people are getting scammed and everything. So before I just get into it, uh, let me introduce to myself in other way. That is, just give me a second. Yeah, how many of you can see with the name Vasan G D F? Uh, I think your uh, screen sharing. I think. Uh, uh no. Uh, you can just look into the participation list. Can yes, you we find can Leonardo DiCaprio. Yeah, we can yes, observe. Yes, we can see Leonardo DiCaprio. Yes, this is kind of a we can see it. a basic deep fake right? uh, where I've just used an open source, right? Oh, we have an advocate, sir. I hope this is okay. It has nothing to do with the legal stuff. I'm just this is for the education purpose. So we can see that I'm talking like uh, Leonardo DiCaprio as of now, right? So you we can understand how uh, in Zoom I'm just joined as a third party person, right? So this we is a basic your screen. No, no, in the participation list. In the participation list. Yeah, you can participation see. list we can see very well. Yes. Yes. So you can understand that in a live stream, I can join as somebody else. Right. So I'm stopping this and uh, let's get into the topic. Right. Yes. Hey. Well, I hope the screen is clear. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. So please note that this session is completely for educational purpose. Neither FD, PPI, or nor the trainer will be held responsible, any responsibility if misused, right? Because we are going to discuss on certain things related to deep webs and dark fakes as well, right? So today's agenda, we'll be discussing on what is a deep fake, history of deep fake, how it works, why deep fakes are a problem, the public examples, how to identify the dark web, and uh, the history of dark web, how to access it, and how to be safe if accessed, right? We live in a, you know, in a fantasy world, a world of illusion, right? The greatest task in life is to find the reality. This is the current scenario that is happening, right? Whatever you see on the news or whatever you see on the, um, you know, in, in the WhatsApp, right? Now it has become difficult for us to understand whether what is genuine and what, you know, what is the illusion and what is the reality, right? So I, I, while I was, you know, going through the, you know, back in 2020, when I was, you know, working on deep fakes, you know, um, at the time, you know, I was going through certain, you know, things. I was wondering how come the deep fakes are become, you know, how this will become a big down the line. And that's when I read about the Irish mud rocks, you know, the, uh, the basic uh, quotation stating that, you know, we live in a fantasy world. That's where I got, uh, you know, interested in more of into deep fakes, right? So what is a deep fake? A deep fake is a deep learning and a fake when I add, right? It's generally understood to be a video in which a face of one person has been swapped with a face of another one, right? 
there are variations on this thing like face swap puppet master limb sync uh, puppet master face swap are the oldest uh, you know it was used earlier right so the origin is the technology relies on the deep learning techniques particularly we call this as generative adversarial networks that is gans right this was first introduced by ann goodfellow and his teams back in 2014 GANs consist of two neural networks. People from BTEC, you might have heard about it, you know, artificial intelligence and everything. That's what it is, you know, neural networks. It starts with neural networks. A generator and a discriminator that works together to create a synthetic data. Other words, we call deepfakes as a synthetic media as well. The other word for deepfake is a synthetic media. Generally, you see a lot uh, these kind of things in the movies you know it's it's a boon for the movie entertainment industry if a person is not joining on that particular day they will take his previous photos and everything they'll bring it here and they will make it right yeah so if you go back to the history um it started in 2016 but as far as i believe uh what i have done my research it started long back in 1997 by doing the video reversals in 1997, there was a concept of doing video reversals. And from there, you know, in 2014, Ann Goodfellow has released his uh, GANs. And from there, 2016, it has came into the world, right? Face-to-face -face paper released, synthesized. Uh, most of you might have seen how Obama, you know, started speaking on certain things where it was Jordan Pillay in the back end who started giving speeches, right? Then you recently, even today, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, Priyanka Chopra is one of her... Uh, 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 ad got released, right? Uh, ad got released, and uh, they came to know that uh, it is not uh, her; it is somebody else, right? So defects are generally growing day by day, and uh, people are utilizing it in a very different manner. Now, even the government of India is taking it very seriously. They are planning to, you know, bring laws against it. You can also see, like I was saying, you know, a viral deepfake video of actresses Priyanka Chopra has gone viral on the internet, right? You know, uh, and, and her, vo her voice was morphed. Not only her uh, looks, even the voice gets morphed, right? And uh, for a, you know, to, and that the original video has been replaced by a fake brand em uh, endorsement. She discloses her annual earnings while promoting this brand, right? So you can just understand how deepfake is literally destroying a person's uh you know uh, uh yeah, i can say a mentality or whatever it is you know but it is see the technology is both the ends you see one it is good at the same time when we use it in a proper uh, improper manner it becomes bad at the same time right similarly people uh in kerala there was a person who got cheated where he paid forty thousand rupees somebody the hacker or we the you know like i'll call generally these people as hackers who did a scam by you know calling him through whatsapp stating that he are, he he is a whole friend right and he's currently his uh, relatives are in uh, you know uh, uh, you know are hospitalized so he needs some money and this person went genuine because his voice the way he looks and his friends whatever he, names he took everyone were matching in that and the person was forced to give 40000 to him but again when the person came back later asking for you know, again, under some some amount like thirty five thousand or something. Then he came, became suspicious, and that's when he reported to the uh, police. Right. So now you can understand how defects are getting into every industry, even in stock market. This has happened for Nitin Kabat, who is the CEO of one of the companies, who was about to be fall into the trap, but he luckily understood that this is something different, and he came out of it. So there is a basic history of deepfakes and not history, I can say currently what is happening, right? Let's understand what is, um, you know, what deepfakes are all about, you know, it is kind of information. We'll understand what is misinformation, unintentionally mistakes such as inaccurate photos, captions, dates, statistics, translations, or when a satire is taken seriously, then you have something called malinformation, right? When deliberately we public, you know, we, we uh, deliberately publication of our private information of our personal or corporate rather than public interest. Then you have something called disinformation. This is what the most fabricated things will happen, right? We, we try to fabricate and manipulate the audio and video contents, right? Intentionally to create conspiracy theories or rumors. Now this can be political, this can be personal as well. And this can be used for the movies as well. So if you take deep fakes, the disinformation can be used everywhere, right? 
So this is one of the guys who started using the reface and when he started looking like uh, Tom Cruise most of the times. So there are multiple tools outside like uh, reface, my heritage, Zaho, face app, uh, deep fakes and a deep art wombo. What I'm saying is these are like, they were back created in the, uh, you know, back, back in 2021 and 22. Right. And before that itself, these things were there. Most of you might have used Reface, if I'm not wrong, where you would uh, take a photo of you and uh, turn yourself into old guy or a new guy or turn yourself into Johnny Depp, right? And uh, most of us have used these apps, right? So these were used for fun times, but slowly the social media has taken over, you know, the, the deep fakes are being taken over by the bad guys for their personal gains, right? Now, even you can see why a defake, uh, you know, is actually a problem, right? The online content is demonstrably being used for criminal reputational influence purposes, right? It has not been possible to take, uh, to, to easily take people's video, right? People therefore trust in more than they say the images, right? I mean, I, I trust something which I see on the paper or I trust something which I see on the video. That, that's the way we trust something. If somebody says something, we on the phone, we don't trust. But when we, once we see in the video or somewhere, and that's where we trust start trusting them, right? In a similar cases, you know, where you can see uh, Putin speaking on uh, the uh, democratic part. I hope, uh, is it visible, guys? Yes, yes, yes. 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 Polling stations are closing. You don't know who to trust. You are divided. There are strings we can pull, but we don't have to. You are pulling them for us. So you can just see how a uh, uh, footage can uh, create things, right? So this is one of the examples what we have taken. Now, the main type what how this works is you know the, the the main type of the neural networks now it you know is used something called an auto encoder that is the main thing that plays the uh, videos to bring out in a proper manner right so this auto encoder is a special type of a deep learning algorithm that performs two tasks one is encoding it takes the input images it creates in a smaller numerical values and then it 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 throws out in a decoder right the encoding is done through a series of layers that start with many variables and gradually become smaller until they reach a bottleneck layer, right? As I said, you know, it brings to a layers where numeric, it, it, it contains into numerical values and then the numerical values get added and then becomes a decoder, right? The bottleneck layer contains target number of variables. The narrower the pro problem domain, the more accurate the results of the auto encoder becomes. If I have multiple images of you, let's say you're looking at um, up, then you're looking down, then you look at right, left, and all these areas. And we all have one habit of putting all our pictures onto the social media. All I have to do is take download all those photos, create in a, you know, a image kind of thing, a movie kind of thing, right? And then take one of the deep fakes, uh, you know, uh, softwares and push it through that. Once I get that, I can take your photos and I can become you. As I showcased, I joined as a participant like a Leonardo, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? And this is this, this is something that, that was an open source, right? So with an open source, if I'm able to join in a live stream, just imagine if I am paying something to somebody, right? If I'm paying, if I'm using a paid version of these things, then I can become anything, anyone. And even my voice gets changed because getting your voice is not a big deal because we all have habit of putting ourselves on the internet, right? Now, deepfake autoencoders application uses special configuration, right? It generate, as I said, it generates two uh, autoencoders. One is to train your face of the actor, another trained on the target. As a face of an actor, I will be, uh, you know, trained and then your then you will be trained on the target part. That's how, you know, you, your, your, your face or whatever the images that I'm taking, it will get bottlenecked, right? So let's see how it works. 
So I have a video A, then I have a video B, then I would just extract the videos, right? And then I will train them. Then I will convert those videos into video C, right? From actor A, because I want to change the actor A. And that's how the actor video D becomes, right? So you can understand that there are multiple steps that will take to change one particular video and mix it with another video. Now, here is a small example of encoder and decoders, what I was explaining, right? I have taken input image of John Travolta and input image of um, Tom Hanks. And then I've used the deep fake algorithm. That is, I'll do the encoder. You can see there is bottleneck message, right? Once the bottleneck, the encoder is done, then I will release an output message. Now, what I would do is I would take, I've taken a Forrest Gump related movie, right? Out of which actually it was Tom Hanks who would be running, but I've changed his face to John Travolta, right? So you can understand how a deep fake works, right? You may think that, okay, in the, in the Forrest Gump, it was, um, you know, uh, John Travolta, not Tom Hanks, but actually in the reality of the movie, it was Tom Hanks who have acted in this, right? Then this is an in-depth flow, what I've taken, right? You have original phase A, encoder, compressed, then you would represent, then you would decode it, and then you would reconstruct it. Similar way you would do for, again, for another original phases, then you would reconstruct it. But when I take, when I want to change the faces, I will take the original face of A, and I would, you know, compress it with B. But this time I will decode it my face B, right? So that my action as an actor, what I have done, and I'm targeting, I'm training the target as well, right? Now I'm sitting here, I would be logging in as the uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, right? Because that is happening from that I'm a, I'm a, I'm, I'm an actor and the person who is sitting next to, you know, of the, who I'm using the face is a target, right? So this is the process that, that the flow works, right? Now, there are multiple examples, public examples that were happening back in time. And one of the famous one is, uh, you know, a few guys were joining in the Zoom call meetings. Unexpectedly, we had, like I joined as a Leonardo DiCaprio, similar way a person has joined as uh, Elon Musk. So these guys were having a Zoom call meeting, right? Suddenly, they saw a person joining the call and uh, they were surprised to see that it was uh, none other than our uh, Elon Musk. So you can just imagine how a deep fake works. So these people were completely confused, right? That Elon Musk has joined in a particular call. So you can just understand how, uh, you know, people can utilize this deep fake, right? And uh, just imagine if tomorrow somebody is writing some exams, sitting at somewhere, you know, in, in their homes, and uh, suddenly if, if a person is using deep, deep fake kind of thing, you know, these things can happen. As of now, we have not heard anything, but I hope it will not happen. Right, but we cannot say how people might use these deep fakes. Right, even as I as I showed you in the previous uh, slide, where uh, the Russian president was talking, the you know on on the Democratic part, even North Korean. If just imagine the North Korean Kim Jong speaking on the democracy and appreciating the democracy, where he is being a dictator. Right. So these are the public examples that we have on the uh, deep fakes. Right. Recent stories of uh, the criminals, you know, where uh, we have seen um, happening. Uh, the recent one was the fraudsters created a deep fake hologram. Just imagine of, of a cryptocurrency chief communication officer that they used on Zoom calls to trick the cryptocurrency executives into disclosing a confidential information. Right. So the fraudsters have created a hologram. Right. Like what I've done just now, and of a, of a, of a company where a chief communication officer was there, 
and they have used zoom calls and they have tricked and they have tricked the particular executive in disclosing the confidential information right second scenario was where a real time voice cloning has happened that allowed the criminals to eliminate like you know they got the voice of a particular uh, bank director fooling a hong kong bank manager and making them transferring 35 million dollars to the criminal organization you know just imagine a fake voice until now you have just seen um you know uh, the persons joining in the zoom calls now this is another level where the fake voice was there the fake voice sounded so real that the manager recognized it on the phone he thought oh, okay it is you so let me just transfer the money so you can just imagine how a voice can even do things right an organization thought they hired a remote employee to provide technical support instead they hired a criminal who created a false persona using a deep fake technology and he has stolen the personal identifiable information with the intent of gaining access to the company's network data now most of you might have understood why you know work from home is not a good idea right and why we need to why we should not hire a remote employee right this is one of the main reasons that it it it, it has created a lot of issues right hackers are sent of fake voice mails eliminating that the voice of a ceo requesting that the company employs an external suppliers contribute a charitable disaster re uh, relief or make an investments via fake websites then these things have really happened people have paid money through that fake uh, you know websites phishing websites right so you can just imagine how these people have used the deep fakes in multiple ways right from holograms joining onto the zoom calls cloning the voice of a person right and uh, most important part is hiring a remote employee without doing a background verification i believe that's what might have happened that's the reason we need to even have background verification being done properly right what's the technical way to identify that the person has faked you in a call on a conference definitely i'll come back to you on that sir i just have a half an hour call or half an hour session so once it is done then definitely i'll answer you on that right okay hackers sent yeah and uh, this was done in back in 2019 where the fake was growing right so one of the person scammed a company by getting 220000 dollars or pounds right and uh, the fraud began when the scammer created a deep fake imitating the voice of ceo of a victim's parent company the victim of the ceo of an energy company received a call that seemed from his boss right in the call the chief executive asked for an urgent transfer so you know to a hungarian provider see whenever uh, you know i don't understand most of the times when you see the phishing emails or when you be into any uh, cyber security trainings or uh, if you receive any phishing emails or calls and anything they always say urgent when they say urgent we should take a pause we should just check with our uh, you know the members who have called us or gave this information right that's always a better thing to do and told him with that they would he would re reimburse right the victim was tricked into believing that the voice of his boss and he gave the entire money to that particular person right imagine a similar recording but this time ceo announces a company wide layoffs just imagine if a company wide layoffs is happening because of a person right or a stock can crash just because of a deep fake right unwanted political speeches writing professional online exams joining the zoom call so these are the major certain risk that we see in the deep fakes i hope the point number 3 what i'm saying the written professional online exam this has not happened yet and ho oh, i believe that this will not happen that easily because you know all this procured exams in the centers they take care of your images and everything you know they will ask you to move your laptop left and right look here and there so that doesn't happen but still we cannot say risk is never zero one or the other way it will come up right so how can we identify a deep fake you know uh, there is a the, this 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 isn't a step i can say that 100% but at least uh um, you know it will help us to identify right um the most important part what i've seen in the deep fake is there's something called blockchain right you might have heard about it blockchain is one of those uh, uh you know the softwares or i can say the one of those technologies which will help to break deep fakes actually because the research what i've done i've you know i i went through it i've read a lot about it because blockchain has a uh, you know ability to break down the things decentralize everything then and there right 
and that's the beauty of blockchain you know when when you're paying something on cryptocurrency it says on blockchain right because it breaks down it decentralizes everything and the data integrity is maintained so blockchain is one of the technologies that will help you to identify and that will help you to keep away from all these kind of activities right so how to identify but to identify we need to pay a lot of attention on that someone is blinking too much or too little right when when i joined as uh, Lena to Dikabe, you might have seen that my eyes were a bit smaller or I'm, you know, I'm not able to blink properly, right? Because that's an image what I had, right? Or my eyebrows were not fitting to me, right? And there is someone's hair in the wrong spot, right? Does the skin look airbrushed or you know, too many wrinkles are there, right? Then when it comes to audio, the voice does not match to their appearance. I have a heavy set of a man, but this is not... 100% I can say because there are people who have fallen trapped for this, right? And uh, you can see the lightning part. That is another important thing. If a person is wearing glasses, you know, there would be a lighting on it. So that is one way to identify it, right? And this is not the only uh, limited part. There are other ways as well. We have deep fakes detection software tools, you know. You know, there is always a joke. The person who prepares, who makes uh, a, a virus is the one who makes antivirus as well, right? Similar way, the people who make uh, deep fake technologies, definitely they make detection technologies as well. That's how the business works, right? So even there are certain companies who are selling the, uh, um, you know, the deep fake detection tools as well, right? And, uh, you know, these, these detection tools will help to identify, but these are mostly of payable ones. But in case, if you are into that particular area where you don't know what to do, you know, if, if you receive a call stating from your known ones, you know, especially the video ones, video calls, it is better to give a call back to the person again, right? Always do that. Take a minute, take a break, call that person, check with them if everything is all right. If everything is all right, that means the person who has called you is a deep fake, right? This is, uh, as I said, you know, in the Kerala, this happened where a man was, forced to give 40,000 rupees, he has fallen into that particular de deep fake scam, right? So always take a minute, take a break, give a call to the person who has, you know, who, who actually spe who's speaking to you on the video, just give him a call as well. You know, you will know whether this is a genuine or not, right? Because there are cases where we keep on hearing that, you know, people are being, uh, you know, uh, not feeling well and uh, pay money or they are being kidnapped or one or one or the other thing, all these kind of things are happening. Just give a call to them, check with them if everything is all right. If they say, yes, I'm fine, then that means this is a scam that is happening, right? Is the fake a glorified version of uh, that? That I'll take later. Yeah. So this is the, uh, I believe I wrapped up very fast because uh, I didn't have time because I have another call as well. So I just thought of wrapping it up very fast. So yeah, any 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 queries on uh, deep fake part before I move into dark web? So I can just take a couple of questions if you want. You said uh, you can identify it with the help of blockchain. So can you run it uh, online when the interaction is happening, or you need to do it in the background or do it posthumous? Uh, blockchain is actually kind of a technology which will run on background. Right. I mean, it is it is uh, not that easy, as I say, but, uh, you know, there, there's been a research on it where uh, it will help, uh, you know, uh, to break down the videos and everything because it is a decentralized part of, uh, you know, uh, thing, actually. So that's how blockchain works. So global platforms like WhatsApp and, uh, you know, Facebook, are they taking any step around it? Uh, do you, any idea? Recently, uh, I believe today itself, I guess, today, today or uh, on third, uh, the government of India has raised, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, they're, they're going to make a law out of it, where already YouTube has said that they are following the local laws, but they are not going to work on these areas. However, India has, the government of India has taken a step to release a law on this. So soon, I believe they would be releasing, a, 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 you know, the, uh, the legal perspective related, whatever it is. So they will be releasing it soon. So that is there. Thanks. Yeah.
is the fake. Okay, let me start with the queries here. Uh, what's the technical way to identify that someone has faked you in a call or a conference? What precautions will be taken? Right. Yeah, like as I said earlier, you know, you can just, um, uh, you know, uh, if, if you are facing that these kind of things where you you think that somebody's faking you, you better give a call to the person, to the actual person, check with him whether, you know, he's the one who's in trouble or not, or whatever is, you know, thing is, you know, whatever the discussion is happening between you and the person, the targeted one, right, or the, how the hacker, right, so you better call the actual original man and, uh, you know, the original person and check with him what exactly is the uh the issue you know they will tell you that rather than being trapped into the deep fake side right can i detect it deep fix yes uh they do uh these days these are happening there is a one one particular thing called deep star if i'm not wrong that is one of the uh tool which is helping out uh you know the companies and the people to uh, you know detect the deep fix Okay, so can I move on to the next one that is on the dark web? Yes, please. Yes, please. Yep. Uh, I think I wrapped it very fast. Yeah. So any positive users in deep fix? Yeah, there are many actually. Um, you know, if, uh, if you want to, uh, like, like, especially this is this is for the common sense expecting unexpected. They will say from the strap or deep fake. Mind sir, that's absolutely right. Common sense and expecting unexpected will say from the strap. Yes, that is that is another thing. Uh, absolutely right. And uh, any positive in the uses in the deep fake that is for the film industries or the entertainment part. You know, they they it's a boon for them, right? Uh, it's a boon for these people actually. And for the public, I don't think uh, there are any users, uh, especially except surprising your family members by allowing the celebrities to give them the happy birthday or kind of messages to you. That's it. Um, nothing more than that, right? Uh, but for the film industries, it's it's a it's a real boon actually because it, it is saving a lot of money to them as well. If you would have seen the movie of Fast and Furious, the last one where uh, after the death of uh, you know the actor Paul, right? They have used his brother's body, and in the last scene you can see that when he turns, you can see actually the Paul Adams, right? If his name is Paul Adams, you can see the the actual guy. Right. But but the thing is, it was his brother actually. So they have used deep fakes there in the movie. So it's 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 kind of a boon for the movie entertainment industry, right? <laughs> so let's get into dark web. So dark web, uh, this is purely for uh, uh, educational purpose, okay? And I would request uh, people not to get into it because once you start looking into it, and you will be traced by the police, right? So this is purely for educational purpose, right? So what is a dark web? Any, any idea, guys? Anyone have any idea on what is dark web? Have you heard about it? I'm told it is not accessible to search engines where they hide their address or uh, manipulate. Yes. In a simple way, underground uh, commercial activities. Yes. So let's understand what exactly it is. It's a World Wide Web that is not part of the surface web. It is indexed by the search engines, right? Most of the content that is not readily accessible, like, you know, like earlier, uh, you know, in the, the call, somebody was saying, right? For example, web, web pages regarding the private user accounts are in the deep web that that is not accessible. You cannot just simply go and search. No, it will not work on your Google. It will not work through your any of the search engines, right? 
The deep web is so big that it is estimated to be 400 to 500 times bigger than the actual surface web. Whatever you're using, it is bigger than that. You can just imagine how big our internet is, right? And uh, whatever we think the internet is, it is not even 4%, whatever we are seeing, right? It is more than 500 times. So, I'm taking just an example of an iceberg, okay? So there is something called level zero, common web, where we use it. This is under government uh, surveillance, where whatever you do, the government can easily have access to it, right? And then you have Berg level, then you have deep web, then you have charter web, Marina's web, fog virus, and then your quantum systems. And uh, let's get into each and every level and we will see what exactly it is, right? And how big our internet is, right? As I said, 96% of the content, what you see is not there on the surface, right? It is it is beneath the ice. I mean, I'm beneath the below beneath the surfaces, right? Sorry. So it can conclude anything. It can it can it, it can have anything in the uh you know, it can have anything in the dark web. You can you can see good stuff, you can see bad stuff as well, right? <laughs> Timeline. So we can see that back in 2002, this was developed by US Naval Research. It's, a, it's, a, it's a actually a laboratory for that. Right? Tor is uh, related to the onion routers. Right? And then slowly it got developed into peer-to-peer. -peer. Then the Tor became a non-profit organization. So in 2009, you might have heard about this person, Satoshi Nakamoto, who started a Bitcoin digital currency. right? And... Uh, most of you might know about by 2014, cryptocurrency went really up. The reason is because in Bitcoins, the cryptocurrency was introduced in, 20, you know, in 2014. That's where your ransomware started hitting high. Now, most of you think that, okay, ransomware is pretty new. It started in 2014, 2016. No, ransomwares are very old. It was there since 1990s itself. But the problem with that time is if I do a ransomware, and if I encrypt everything, and if a person is paying me MO, so there it was, a, they were able to track that money, you know, in the online, whatever do I do in all, you know, electronic part, especially on the account side, it is, it was easily trackable, right? So people weren't using that kind of stuff. But once the Bitcoin were released, and, you know, people have understood that it is very difficult to identify the borrower, whoever is taking the money, it is very difficult to identify him because the only thing is you've given hash to a particular person, right? It is not the entire account number, your username, account number, the customer ID. No, you don't give anything. You just give a hash, which is not traceable, right? So hackers have understood that, yes, this is a huge business. So let us start with ransomware. That's how the ransomware was born again, right? And it took its own algorithms were built. 2011, Silk Road, the market was launched and they made a huge money out of it, right? They made a huge money. By 2013, they were shut down because of FBI was able to identify them and they arrested them, right? <laughs> and then the slowly it became a very big hit, right? Yeah. Now, surface web, let's understand the difference between surface web and the deep web. Surface web are statistically generated linked content. You know, you can crawl anywhere you want, readily accessible through any browser. Search engine like, you know, deep web requires any, any search engine. Let's say if I want to search for Vasan Garmela, all, all I have to do is Vasan Garmela, type Vasan Garmela, it will give me LinkedIn, Facebook, whatever I'm there, I can crawl through it, right? Or if I type a particular company name XYZ, I can just crawl through it, right? But when it comes to deep website, no, you cannot do that. Right, the entries are dynamically generated. I'll take you through that as well. I created a small, uh, a graphical kind of thing where I'll show how we jump around so that you know my identity cannot be seen. Right, unlinked content. It, I, it is not like web crawls. It is completely decentralized. So if I get into one thing, I cannot jump into other one. So it is completely unlinked. Right, private web scripted contents purely non-HTML. You will not see any fancy. Uh, related websites. It's a pure, old, basic HTML related ones, right? A limited access content, uh, you know, you, you cannot just simply uh, get into it because even in dark web and deep fake, uh, in the dark webs as well, or in the deep web, uh, you cannot simply go in the level. It needs a lot of uh, technologies. It needs a lot of, uh, you know, uh, 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 knowledge on the system, on the network as well, right? 
I can go to a certain limit, a certain level, but after that, I, it is very, very highly impossible to go because you need a lot of knowledge and as well as you need a lot of um, skill sets to get into it, right? As I said, level one, that's the surface web, right? It's a indexed by Google, does not require specialized softwares or credentials to access. The web, the data was vast majority of internet users are, we, we are using, uh, you know, uh, Google, right? And it's not only Google, you have many other things as well. Like you have Bing, you have uh, DuckDuckGo, you have, um, you know, uh, you name it, you have multiple search engines, right? Accessible in any nation that does not block internet access, even places like China and Egypt, you can just access, right? You can just go through VPN, you can access it. Then you have social media like Facebook, informational websites like Wikipedia, general websites. So the, all these things comes under my surface web. That's what we see. Now there's burglar, you know, the second level is brick level, where we, where we call, right? This is a layer of the sub surface web that is blocked in some nations. Not everyone has access to it, right? Some other information is only accessible through illegal means, like Google locked results, uh, or, or recently web crawl, old contents, pirated medias, or adult contents, right? Then you have level three. That's where your deep web would start, not indexed by Google. You need to have separate a tool to log in into it, right? It requires a proxy or two to access. We have certain uh, tools like Tor. Okay, guys, this is purely for educational purpose, right? Please stick to it. Do not try to get into it. And it's, you know, I'm request, right? This contains most of the archived web pages back of 1990s web that do not renew their domain names, right? You have government, business, research, whatever you name it, you will find there. You will have hackers sitting on those areas. You will have script kitties. Script kitties are like a person who don't know what exactly a program is. They use a basic ones, like let's say a college students, or if you're very new to the system and you want to hack something, right? So you would use, you, you are called a script kitties, right? Um, virus informations. Then you have illegal and absence content, right? People, you will see the reality of uh, people there. You know, then you have level four, that is chatter web, you know, like a regular deep web, but harder to get into it, more illegal content. Like I said, you know, there is a level till where I can get into it. But after that, you know, it needs a lot of uh, 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 skill sets and you, you need to know the root of that, right? Advanced covert, you know, government research. <coughs> Most of the internet black market run on the Bitcoins there. Then you have uh, humans, arms, drugs, rain, animal, trafficking, assassination networks. You have bounty hunters, illegal game hunting, line of blood locations, more banned options, contents on CPU, whatever uh, you see, whatever you think of mafia or whatever it is, you will find here in level four, right? That is what Chatter Web is all about, right? Then comes your Marina's Web. This is the low, lowest known level of the deep web. It's like a marinas. You know, might you might have heard about marina trench, right? In the in the, in the maps or the Google, you know, where we read about it, the, the deepest level of our ocean. So it it you know it, in the same way it is the name of a Spanish guy who created it, right? And it's extremely difficult to access, right? Only you can see people like Julian Assange or or, or any other top level WikiLeaks members are believed to have access to it, right? So this is what level five is all about. Then comes the rumored ones, level six and eight. Uh, this is uh, a rumor one, but I think uh, mostly uh, people might not have access to it, even the ones uh, who have a lot of knowledge on it. There's only the certain level of people can have it. Level six is a giant firewall meant to prevent people from further going, right? And then you have the fog, is where the worldwide power player jock, jockey for control the prey map. That is my quantum systems kind of thing, right? Said to be very dangerous, it is full of viruses, right? This level seven is a fog. Uh, you know, it is it is currently being used, right? Uh, it is to protect. It is to protect my quantum series as well, right? Level eight is called Primark, and please don't be confused. Uh, the fog with the technology, you know, which is coming now, the fog technology, right? It is not the same. It is different, right? Now cloud is going back. Now fog is coming in uh, in in the picture now. There is something called fog technology that is coming in, right? So that is not the same, like what level seven is, that is different. <clears throat> then you have level eight is called as Primark and it is claimed to be the controlled by the extremely powerful AS. That is the quantum computers, right? 
So these are the levels of, uh, you know, my dark web, my internet, the entire internet, right? From level zero till level eight, you have the internet. What we see is only a four person, an ocean and a drop. I can say a drop in ocean. Sorry, that's that's what we know. But that's that's this is something different that um, you have multiple layers of internet to get into it, right? Ethical users, some organizations such as Bright Planet claim to be, uh, uh, you know, uh, the deep web has higher quality articles than the surface web and a lot more of them, right? Uh, people who do a lot of researches try to get into it and understand what exactly has happened because journalists or, or you know, or, 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 or people from WikiLeaks, they try to get into it and they try to take the, you know, uh, data from there. They try to understand what it is, right? Deep apps are capable engines like IP2L well, and Infomind can be used to find them, right? That, that is one of the search engines in deep web we have. Uh, dig deep enough, you will know, you'll find some interesting about past. That's what I was saying. You know, we have any experiments that were done previously or any researchers that they have done by the governments that will be there in that, right? So that is the reason I suggest people not to use it, not to get into it. You know, if you want to have a peaceful life, stay on level one. No, I don't want to have get into level two, then get into the trouble, right? My suggestion, this is purely for educational purpose only. Assuming you use them ethically, there are hacking virus creations, tutorials, and information as well, as well as large community of hackers and scriptities to learn from them. You will even find how to hack, how to use the, how to create a virus or malware. There are tutorials there, right? Because you will not find these things on the surface web. Once you, if you find on the surface web, immediately you will be arrested, right? So that is the reason they put all these things down there. And we are not even sure how good these creations are because uh, the pe the person who might write, he might write to get access from you only to identify who you are and then do certain things with you, right? Now, accessing and navigating to the dark web. So we have, uh, uh, dark web can be reached through decentralized. That is, uh, we have certain nodes where number of uh, network, including that is stored, that is a, the onion router we call, right? And or I have invisible uh, internet project. These are like browsers actually. They play a role of a browser, right? So we use them to get into the uh, websites, right? And uh, once we get into the Thor um, or the invisible internet project, and from there we start establishing the layers, right? We try to get into the deep web. That's how we get into the first layer of deep web, right? To get from layer to layer, the Thor has to establish relays, right? I'll take you through that as well. Right. And on computers around the world through the information passes. See, the minute when I log in directly into the Thor, right, or into the dark web, immediately I'll be called by, uh, you know, I, I can be easily traceable. Forget about government, I'll be traced by the hackers, right? My IP address would come into the picture, then it will create a lot of problem to me. And always I suggest people, whoever are using laptops, please have paste a sticker or something on your webcam. Right? We never knew whatever you're clicking on things, it will allow the hackers to use your webcam. So always ensure that your webcams are closed. This is one of the reasons, right? Yeah. When using a TOR software, the IP addresses remain hidden. The reason is we are using a TOR where it takes you through each and every place, right? It, will, it, it is kind of a VPN. It acts like a VPN. It, it, it does a relay, right? It doesn't give your direct address, but still, it is still identifiable and it takes time. Recently, one of the a uh, 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 group have able to you know crack that particular algorithm and the tor part 2 got released you know because they were able to break that algorithm itself right now in order to access let's say i'm sitting in the alaska region then i have a tor at sitting you know in the uh, greenland and then in us then in europe and every part of the country i have now how to log in i'll just get it to one side and then slowly it starts routing me to the other areas this is how the relays happen. And then I would join into the, you know, into the server of layer two or layer three, whatever it is. Layer three generally, chatter webs, right? Now, how the communication happens, right? That, that is another important part. So email service providers, for instance, typically you only you require, you know, only require users to input a username and password to sign up. In addition, email services are generally offer anonymous messaging and encrypting storage. Even they have a email kind of thing, right? And they have number of anomalous real-time chat rooms. These are there, such as Hub, the Onion Chat are hosted on Tor. Feeds are organized by topics. So the minute you are there, you will have charts and everything there, right? While some sites do not require any information from users, 
before participating in chats, uh, but others do request for and register of email address. Never do that. Personal messaging through Tor message uh, messenger is another option that Tor users do. Right, if you wish to communicate a particular person, you can do that. And uh, then there is an anonymity on it because it creates another layer. If I'm trying to contact somebody, a person A from here, so it creates a layer and it will it will ensure that my IP address has not been seen and it will ensure that my actual name or my actual the person is not there. Right, visibility of that. Right. So bit message is a popular messaging system which is uh, which offers encryption as well, strong encryption of uh, you know uh, that is there in that. And they can decentralize and peer-to-peer -peer instant messaging is there, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And uh, for navigating the content on deep or dark web, you know, it may not be caught by web crawlers, right? Then how this thing works is, you know, once we are into it, it is completely unstructured, right? And it is unlinked and temporary content. Whatever you see today may not be there tomorrow, right? As such, there are different mechanisms navigating in the deep web than they, than they are in the surface web. Users often navigate from dark websites through the directories of hidden wiki, right? They have their own wikis. We call that as hidden wiki, right? Which organizes site by categories similar to Wikipedia. So. I don't want to run here and there. All I do is get into the hidden wiki, look at the uh, you know list of uh, sites, and accordingly, I, I you know I just get into it wherever I want, right? Right? Uh, because that is one of the search engines for the uh, in the dark web, right? The search engines may be uh, broad, searching across the deep web, or maybe used for more specific instance. Ahima, Amiya is an example broader search engine that indexes searches on the catalogs content published on Tor hidden services. So I don't need to run here and there. All I have to go is and just type Aima in the dark web and get the, it will give me the list of all the, uh, uh, you know, the contents that are there, right? Grams is more specific search engine, similar to what uh, Google is, right? Where users can find illicit drugs, guns, and whatever you want, it will give you the list there. So you can just understand how this dark web works, right? How the surface web is similar way, even the, um, you know, the dark web works because it is more bigger than the actual web, right? When using Tor, the website URLs change format and it ends. It does not end with, you know, whenever we see our uh, our websites, um, it says either .com, .org, .net. These, this is how it ends, right? But when you visit into Tor, you're completely, your URL is different. It either stays, uh, stays in uh, uh, .on, uh, that is onion related suffix it will have, dot o you know dot onion site or something else right because it will hide your services like i said i don't want to relieve myself i don't want to give my IP address so the tor would take care of it because it generates an algorithm where the uh, you know the uh, identifying of my ip address will get difficult for the hackers right even for the government as well right but still government can able to access because whatever we touch on our electronic devices it will definitely give, give them an alarm as well right in addition, the speed is reduced, right? Even more users are simultaneously on the network. So it is not only you, there are multiple people joining on the Tor. So obviously your speed will not be great like what you have in the surface web, right? On the other hand, increasing the number of users who agree to use their computers really can increase the speed of Tor, right? Now you have multiple things where hackers can do illegal activities, right? On the dark web. First one is your currency perspective. The dark web acts as a distributor of the, uh, you know, whatever you get the money, right? It, it, it will allow to, uh, for example, let's say uh, recently uh, our other related data was been sold on the internet, right? Uh, most of you might have read about it. Uh, luckily our, not our biometric, but at least, you know, the data. And along with that passports related data has been also sold on the market as per the news, right? And, uh, you know, <clears throat> you will find that Right. And uh, you will also find, uh, you know, uh, forged documents, right? Several sites on the documents, you can see that providing fake passports, immigration papers, driving licenses, and other identity documents for any country in the world. And these are being sold as well, right? Even in the dark web, they sell all these kind of things. The price of these documents mainly depends on the country, which, which country you want to go, right? This services allows the notorious people to acquire a fake citizenship as per their needs, right? 
Other forged documents that are readily available includes your citizenship papers, fake IDs, college diplomas, and even diplomatic identity cards. So you can just imagine what all things I can find in the internet. So you can see the rates that are being there published on the internet in the dark net, where you can see for Australia passport, I have to pay 600 euros. Uh, driving license and everything 700 and if you, if you can just see the list you can just identify right i think india is not there nobody wants to come to india right yeah india is not there so you can just see about us uh, spain and everything they just cost like anything right and they will give you the passports as well <laughs> then comes your drugs right different types of quality of illicit drugs will be sold even banned drugs pharmaceutical products like retlin or or uh, xanax also find on the dark net, right? On the dark web, it has been found. Silk Road is an example. This, as I said in the beginning, back in 2012, uh, 13th Silk Road was one of the biggest uh, marketplace where they sold multiple things, but they got caught later on. <laughs> then comes our uh, stolen confidential information. Most of us keep on discussing, you know, our data has been sold, our data has been, you know, done. yes, this is how they sell the data. They try to, um, you know, get into your systems take the entire, uh, you know, uh, data from your company. They will ask the company, do a bounty kind of thing. Either you pay me or I'll sell it in the dark web. Certain companies do pay, certain companies do not pay, right? That That's that's the reality. And once, if the company is not paying, these people will put a, uh, they'll, they'll put an announcement on the uh, internet or uh, in the dark web, say that, you know, I'm going to sell so-and-so data and uh, multiple hackers and all these things, people will come and purchase that, right? Buying and selling of stolen credit cards, bank account details, even personal information like social security number, all these things are getting sold, right? Apart from say, physical uh, credit or debit cards, bank accounts can also be purchased at different prices in the dark world. Hackers, another community that benefits from the dark webs, including the hackers as well, right? They can easily buy sophisticated malwares and even get paid by the interested parties to carry out any kind of hacking attacks. There's something called ransomware as service. Can you just imagine, I heard about uh, cloud as service. Now we have something called ransomware as service as well, right? Even that services have been provided, right? I think it is eight, uh, but I'll try to wrap it up. Then you have arms, right? And ammunitions have been sold. Then you have hitmans. Oh, just imagine assassination. Professional assassins are sitting there. Human organ trafficking, then attack as services. Like I said, you know, cyber as service or ransomware as service, right? Selling subscriptions to malwares and ransomware toolkits to automate attacks. Then you can even purchase DDoS attacks, right? And uh, these, these are the major things that happens in the dark web. And we cannot say what else is happening. There are multiple things that happen on the dark web. Positive sides of dark web, right? There is no doubt because uh, people living in the countries under the suppressive regulations, they even often try to get into it, <coughs> right? For example, if Facebook was launched version uh, with the website of Tor, you can see how Tor looks like, right? I said, you know, you will not have .com or anything. You'll have Onion there, right? So that's how they gave access to it. Journalists, whistleblowers also utilize the dark web, right? Uh, to relieve information about the notices to bring to the common man, right? How if I have to bring what is happening in my country if everything is closed. So dark web is a way that I can bring things out, right? And I can be anonymous. Uh, I am not required to be open. I can be anonymous there, right? And without being uh, fearing of the political surveillances or uh, any other super uh, suppressions, right? In 2010, Tor was given award of projects of social benefit from Free Software Foundation for helping whistleblowers and supporters of human rights. Just imagine, it was used for the good purpose, but it went in a row, right? Bloggers, writers, and other creative people who fear censorship of the surface web become frequent users of dark web. Celebrities and common people who do not want to leave behind any kind of online trail, including their identity search, history location, are active users of dark web. This happens uh, if you if you if you if you purchase certain subscriptions. Like there are companies who give you that, and uh, once you give your name and everything, they'll start. You, know, you have to pay a huge amount of money to them, right? And they will their job is to identify your name and your whatever details are there on the online. They will try to find it and they'll remove it, right? Many scientific findings have not been made public on the surface web, but that can be found on the dark web, right? Many 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 findings you can see scientific findings that are still available on the dark webs. Such people look upon dark web as a heaven. You know, There's kind of a heaven for these kind of people, for journalists, for the writers, for the blog, blog people, you know, whoever, researchers, students, you know. That's it's kind of an heaven if it is used in a proper manner for the good reasons, right? Now, notable uh, sized uh, seized websites, Silk Road, Alpha Bay, and Hansa. 
Uh, these were there, uh, you know, but this got shut down. And you can see the Silk Road, they had estimated revenue of $1.2 billion. They have earned, they earned like anything, right? But uh, the founder, Ross, was being uh, convicted and he was sentenced to life prison. And uh, similar way, Alpha Bay was being created, but it it is 10 times the size of Silk Road. Just imagine 1.2 billion of one particular black market a website. Similarly, they have started something called Alpha Bay, which is 10 times bigger than that, right? And uh, he was found dead and, uh, you know, in the Thai jail. Then uh, Hansa was another one, and this got shut down immediately after uh, uh, it was, you know, Dutch police were able to seize the market, you know, uh, the marketplace, they were able to identify the person and they have seized the information and they have ensured that the, uh, you know, the, the particular website was down. Uh, certain things which are there, which was sold uh, back in, uh, you know, in the, in the dark web, right? And this is an old stuff, but still it is there in the market, right? So how to browse safely? Uh, Tor is a known for the online. As I said, Tor is one of the known online one and it's secure to use it. But at the same time, the minute you get into it, the you will be under, so, you know, uh, the police will, police or anyone, you know, you are under the radar of them, right? So always try not to get into it, right? Don't use your regular email or websites. Never ever give your personal email IDs or personal information on these kind of things. Because once you do, your complete identity is exposed and there will be another doplanger like you sitting there. And he'll be using, he'll be living your life. So never ever do that. Keep things with you itself. Never ever give your information to anyone. And uh, coming to the, some viruses, you know, some websites could infect your devices if you are using it without understanding uh, if you are not having any proper tools then definitely your systems get viruses and which you cannot even remove which you cannot do anything on that right hackers can find your forums on the dark web and you can hire the computer hackers to do illegal activities not surprisingly a lot of people do these willing to hack your devices so it gets hacked as i said webcam hijacking this is another thing right as i said you know always cover your webcams no matter what right because there is a tool called uh, remote administration tool. We call it as RAT and that can be installed on your systems. And this can lead that someone to hijacking your webcam, right? And letting them see whatever you're up to, whatever you do. And when your webcam is there, you may think, okay, I've not switched on, it is switched off, but no, sir, behind the system, it will be running, right? Even so it is always better to put a piece of paper or stick it with something so that, you know, it cannot, you cannot be seen by the hackers, right? It's another kind of a safety thing. Cyber hygiene, uh, always download antivirus, keep with you, right? Have a up-to-date antivirus. Then uh, if you're using Gmail or anything, do not just simply click on things without knowing who's the sender, right? And always ensure not to click on unsubscribe button because that is another way to get, you know, tricked into clicking on things, right? Protect your files, do a research, be a CISO of your house because we are the ones who take care of our family. So it is our responsibility. So please be the CISO. Always do a research, educate yourself, what you're clicking on, what permissions you're giving on the web, uh, you know, apps and all. So please do a research. Do not log in into a dark web through your corporate network or through your office, home network. You know, be always safe if surfing, right? Be always safe. Protect your files. Always use, uh, do, not, do not reuse the same passwords for all the accounts. Have a different ones, right? So these are the references that I've taken on deep fakes and dark web. And uh, yeah, any queries? Sorry guys, I've taken extra time. I believe 10 minutes extra I have taken. No, it was very much interesting. Now I'm having another issue now. See, we have made online money gaming as a part of taxation. Even that fellow has supplier abroad. We have made him that he has to register with us and do how to hunt them out in the dark web on as I said, the gaming guys yeah as i said uh, there are there are uh, uh, people there are companies who are doing this right but it is a huge amount you have to pay for them yeah thank there you are, there are companies uh, who where if we pay amount uh, certain money to them uh, yeah. they will do the whatever the task you have given them they will do that yeah because the indian law further stipulates he has to register and any supplier in that money game act, which has been from the Ministry of Electronics, which says that they are going to block those them, those websites which are providing online money gaming. How they will do, that is also a mystery now. I am worried. Let me do some more work on that. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.
Yeah, somebody is asking me, can you please let me know how to access these dark web layers? Hare Krishna. Okay. Uh, I would seriously suggest that. Uh, I'm not going to answer that. My apologies. Uh, because I don't want to be in trouble. And I don't want this group to be in trouble. So uh, I'm sorry about that. Yeah. Anyone else? Any any queries? Thanks. You guys have? It's a very informative session. Very good. Thank uh, you, thank see, you. now any dark web uh, you wanted to go through, you have to go through our internet. The gateways has to be one of our communication providers only. Yeah. Is it correct? Or do they have any other gateway to get into this? See, uh, Tor is one of the gateways, right? And uh, it, it, to get into it. As I said, you know, once we get into Tor and we do everything, hmm. uh, but still, since you are on the internet, you are still searchable, actually. But that will take time. Yeah, but okay. Say, suppose, for example, one uh, service provider, say, communication provider, Airtel, mm -hmm. uh, he can always restrict. Uh, nobody can use uh, Tor in his uh, network. He cannot do that, sir. The reason is you have something called VPNs as well. Because, see, if I want to join, I, I will not go directly. I'll use certain VPNs, right? And through that VPN, I'll connect to a particular country. And from there, I'll open my Tor. Yeah, VPN that also is a, some kind of a protocol. So once they start no, no, blocking no. protocol level, uh -huh. once they start blocking protocol level, then they can do this. See, for example, in Jammu and Kashmir, they have stopped all the communication during that period. Then how did they do that? That's what, sir. If I have a paid version of a hmm. VPN, right, hmm. I, can, I can use that. Even, let's say, if I take example of Egypt, right, back in 2009, 2011 or 12, when the entire country was shut down, no okay. internet was there. No mm -hmm. internet was there, right? But the anonymous group managed to get one liner, what, you know, what they have opened the internet for the entire country using one particular line. So mm -hmm. there are ways to open up the internet, right? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, through some other country or some other uh, operator, they have it, to it can it can happen, sir. They can they can use that using VPNs and different kinds of VPNs. But especially if I have a, if I have they if they have a paid VPN, then through mm -hmm. paid VPNs also they can do it. Multiple countries like uh, if I, if you go to Saudi or UAE, you cannot access multiple websites. So what these people do is they get into, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, into the VPNs and they try to connect to the one particular country, and from there they will try to access it. Okay. Yeah. Jim, uh, Jim, can the same Kashmir concept can be used for a good purpose. Yes. Same concept can be used for the good purpose as well. If you make a all restricted uh, network uh, for my all banking transaction or any financial transaction through this thing only, and at all the gateways, uh, users have to be tracked. I, I didn't get that actually. Sorry, I, I didn't get that. Yeah, for the good purpose, means suppose now the lot of uh, uh, financial frauds are happening uh, mm -hmm. and uh, banking and other related things. So now this same concept can it be used uh, to secure all these uh, transactions? That depends, sir. I cannot say that. That depends actually. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are these large organizations like Microsoft, Amazon, and all their data also available on dark web? I hope this is not recorded. Uh, <laughs> uh, see, that's what I mean. If 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 they might have paid the amount, uh, definitely they will be able to identify. Yes, every data. Uh, let me tell you. Put it in another way. Uh, uh, whatever is there on the internet is not a secret, right? It is available to everyone. The only way is to how to identify it, right? Uh, recently, Microsoft has done, uh, uh, if, if I'm not wrong, in the as per the hackers news, uh, one of the researchers has placed the username and password of their, uh, uh, you know, a lab related ones, and where all the uh, team related, the teams chat, whatever was there, it was being sold on the dark web. So information, whatever we have, whatever we see, yes, it depends on how we secure it. It it is available on the dark web. There are certain companies who will help you out to remove all these things as well. Any other questions or uh, inputs? Anyone? 
thank you uh, thank you mr vasant uh, uh, this deep fake has uh, actually uh, shattered the belief that belief we have all been conditioned with that seeing is believing and uh, and about the uh, dark web the dark underbelly of internet i still would like to believe that ignorance is bliss uh, and find comfort in the saying that ignorance is bliss uh, thank you mr vasant uh, thank you so much for an exhaustive excellent session you have detailed uh, every aspect of uh, uh, dark web and uh, you know deep fake for us uh, the um, you know thank you so much for taking that efforts to take us through this layers of uh, this this two concepts thank you very much thank you everyone for joining and thank you, thank you. Uh, thank you for the discussion thank you asan yeah. thank you thank you all yeah okay. thank you once again it is nice session thank you